got uh, windows and everything that's falling out. Got a hell of a dust cloud. Just Emergency. Cypress section of the West Grand Freeway has come down. The Cypress structure has collapsed. 25238, we have a major injury accident. Cypress and West Grand do. They're advising major injuries. We're attempting to get 1141. Cypress structure is a double deck reinforced concrete structure built about the same time as the Alaskan Way viaduct. As soon as I saw the photos, I thought about the viaduct because they are visually quite similar to each other enough similarities that it immediately made me think of the viaduct and, and its vulnerability. My name is Steve Kramer. I'm a professor of civil environmental engineering here at the University of Washington. I specialize in geotechnical earthquake engineering, where we look at how soils and soil masses behave during earthquakes. My name is Robert Robinson, although most people call me Red, and I'm the director of underground services at Shannon Wilson. I'm in charge of all of our tunneling, micro-tunneling, trenchless projects. I was in San Francisco in 1989 to look at two tunnels that had been built at the turn of the century. One of them right under the giant stadium. During the earthquake, I was down at Fisherman's Terminal in San Francisco and then went back after the earthquake and went out and looked at the tunnel. And the tunnel was stable, but virtually no damage at all. And then the rest of San Francisco was falling down, but the tunnels were fine. The State Department of Transportation did an in-house review of the viaduct immediately after the Loma Prieta earthquake. They asked a group of us in the Civil Engineering Department to review what they had done. We became convinced very quickly that you couldn't separate its seismic vulnerability from that of the seawall that runs along the, the waterfront along parallel to much of the viaduct. And so that began a study of the seawall as well. We were predicting what would happen in an earthquake. The analysis took a week to run on the computer, and it was just failing. It was toppling, essentially. In 2001, during the Nisqually quake, the Alaska Way Viaduct was damaged. On the north end of the Alaska Way Viaduct, the viaduct goes over the Great Northern Railroad Tunnel. The adjacent, almost underlying Great Northern Tunnel that was built in 1905 suffered virtually no damage at all. The viaduct was damaged and the Great Northern wasn't. In an earthquake, as the waves come up from below, their amplitude increases as, they, as you get closer and closer to the surface. And so the shaking that you feel on the surface is much stronger than the shaking you feel down at some depth. A tunnel is in the ground and it's surrounded by the ground, so when the ground moves, the tunnel moves, it moves with the ground. And so the, the amount of deformation that's imposed on a tunnel is going to be typically much lower than it is in a structure that's above ground. Earthquake waves work pretty similar to ocean waves. If somebody's on top of the ocean wave, they get bounced around. If you're down below that ocean wave, then you get moved around slowly and easily with the, with the water, but you're not getting bounced around and a tunnel is analogous to that scuba diver beneath the surface. The tunnel moves with the ground. It doesn't get bounced around by the ground like a building would or, or a viaduct. Consequently, these tunnels don't suffer damage or the damage is very insignificant. The SR-99 tunnel is designed for a 9.0 earthquake. That's a large subduction zone event off the coast of Washington. The tunnel is composed of 1,400 concrete rings. It's all bolted together and it, it holds together, but it also creates some flexibility. So when the earthquake wave moves underground and, and moves and hits the tunnel, it can move and return to its original shape after the earthquake is concluded. Our knowledge of earthquakes and the way structures respond to earthquakes in general is worlds ahead now of where it was when that viaduct was designed. The tunnel is down in glacial till, soils that had about 2,500 feet of ice on top of them. And so those soils are compacted, they're very dense, they're very tight, and they're very strong. So that's just the kind of material that you would like to be building in. The walls, the road decks, the corbels that those walls sit on, those are also designed to be flexible and to withstand the effects of a large earthquake. The SR-99 tunnel would be the safest place to be in Seattle uh, during and after a big earthquake. That tunnel is by far the safest place to be during an earthquake. I'm looking forward to seeing Seattle and, and, and a new waterfront down there with a, with a tunnel 
heading underneath it that uh, people can travel safely through.